Japan has not yet decided on a date to begin the release of Fukushima water. The treated radioactive water from the tsunami wrecked Fukushima nuclear power plant will be released into the Pacific. According to reports, the release can begin as early as later this month. It will most likely come after Tokyo's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida meets with US President Joe Biden and South Korean President Yu Sang Myo. Kishida will explain the safety of the release in the meeting which is to be held in the US in the week to follow. The Philippines has accused Chinese Coast Guard of blocking Manila's military boat by using water cannons on Saturday. The incident took place near the second Thompson Shoal, which is a submerged reef. Manila claims some of its troops guard the reef living on a World War II era US ship that was intentionally grounded in 1999. China's Coast Guard countered that it implemented necessary controls in accordance with the law to deter Philippine ships. Beijing accused the ships of trespassing and carrying illegal building materials. China claims sovereignty over almost the entire South China Sea, an assertion rejected internationally. The Philippines has summoned Beijing's ambassador over the incident. A major fire broke out at a plastic recycling plant in U.S. state of New Mexico on Sunday. The emergency response teams were dispatched to the scene while officials enacted health warnings due to hazardous air pollutants. The Air Force along with firefighters and rescuers combated the blaze as the situation quickly escalated into a multi-alarm incident involving multiple jurisdictions. The prevailing wind carried the smoke across different areas where officials have called for limited outdoor activities. The reason for the fire is unknown. A grocery store worker in Turkey had to be rushed to the hospital after he was blown into the air by strong winds on Wednesday. The incident occurred while he was trying to keep the sun umbrella from falling over. As per the local media reports, the man was carried over for about 3 meters before he crashed onto the road. The worker was kept under observation for two days and was then discharged. Record rains triggered by Typhoon Doksuri continue to wreak havoc in several regions of China. At least 14 people have died in China's northeast Jilin province. Rescue operations are on. Nearly about 19,000 people have been evacuated while 21 temporary relocation facilities have been set up in the province. On the other hand, over 40,000 residents in Flood Hind in flood hit Wuchang city have also been evacuated to safer spots. Water levels in 50 rivers across China have risen above the danger mark. Beijing's water ministry has raised the flood alarms to level 3. Hundreds of people have been evacuated as massive wildfires blaze across Italy Spain and Portugal. And as temperatures continue to rise, experts predict the risk of wildfires and heat waves is expected to escalate. In Portugal, around 17,000 acres have been destroyed and at least 11 people reported injured in the blaze. In Italy, nearly 600 residents and tourists have now been evacuated from western Sardinia. At least four firefighting planes from France and Greece joined the Italian firefighters' air fleet to help control the blaze.
house collapsed into the Mendenhall River in the Alaskan capital following glacial floods on Saturday. According to, uh, according to the record flooding, I beg your pardon, struck the city of Juneau on Saturday after a glacial dam outburst. The outburst destroyed at least one structure prompting city officials to issue evacuation orders for residents. Glacial outbursts as a phenomenon has increased worldwide as a result of climate change. According to Alaska's weather office, the water level of the lake reached nearly 15 feet. The record rise is three foot over the previous record set in 2016. It is also about five feet over moderate flood levels. In India, vehicle retail sales saw a boost in July, according to the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association. Although passenger vehicle sales grew marginally by 4%, there are concerns about rising inventory levels and a potential slowdown in demand. Inventory days for passenger vehicles increased to 50 to 55 days, signaling longer storage periods for unsold vehicles. The upcoming festive season starting late in August is expected to drive stronger retail purchases and ease inventory build-up. However, experts warn that a weak festive period could lead to inventory corrections post-November. In a major development, around 80% of investment banking staff at Credit Suisse in Hong Kong are set to be laid off as part of the bank's integration with UBS Group. The move comes after UBS acquired Credit Suisse aiming to reduce risk in its investment banking operation. Hong Kong, which is the hub of Credit Suisse's Asian investment bankers, will see significant worse for workforce reduction, with only around 20 bankers being spared. UBS recently closed Credit Suisse's New York office and plans to provide more details on its integration plan soon. The retained staff will focus on mergers and acquisitions. China's world's second largest economy is struggling. As per Reuters reports, China's exports are expected to have contracted by 12.5% in July, marking the worst decline since the early days of the pandemic in 2020. This follows a drop of 12.4% in June as manufacturers in the second largest economy struggle to find buyers due to high inflation and rising interest rates in global markets. Chinese factory activity also fell for the fourth consecutive month, posing challenges to third quarter growth. The government hinted at stimulus measures but investor response was lukewarm. While imports are predicted to have shrunk by 5%, South Korean exports to China, a key indicator, dropped sharply by 25.1% in July. In a strategic move, Paytm's founder and CEO Vijay Shekhar Sharma is set to acquire a 10.3% stake valued at $628 million from its largest shareholder, Antfin Holding. This step aims to streamline ownership and simplify the company's structure. After the, transaction, after the transaction, Sharma's ownership in the fintech giant will rise to 19.42%, while Antfin's share will decrease to 13.5%. Notably, this change won't impact Paytm's management or control, with Sharma and the current board remaining at the helm. The US dollar showed mixed performance after a recent jobs report left markets uncertain. While job additions were lower than expected in July, wage gains and lower unemployment provided some support. 
This led to the dollar touching a one-week low against other currencies, but its decline was limited due to signs of a still tight labor market. Traders are now awaiting crucial inflation data from the US and China this week. The US dollar index stood at 101.98 with the euro slightly down and sterling slightly up.